Identity theft is the fastest growing crime in America. And welcome to my level 2 lesson on Microsoft Access, one of the most popular and powerful database programs in use today. In this lesson, we will begin to explore the real power of Access as a relational database. In the previous lesson, we helped a young entrepreneur named Eddie organize his video and DVD rental store's tape inventory. We will expand the Rewind database created in our first lesson to include a customer table and a tape rental table. Once those are built, we'll create relationships among the data in the inventory, customer, and tape rental tables. We'll also learn how to design simple and complex queries. Finally, we'll create a custom report in the form of a letter we can send to some of our video store customers. Before we start the lesson, I'd like to introduce you again to my student assistant, Suzanne. Just follow along with her, and you'll be using this program in no time at all. Because Access works within Windows XP or higher, it is important you understand the Windows environment. If you are not familiar with Windows, I strongly suggest you see my series of lessons on learning Windows before starting this lesson. Also, you should be familiar with the skills taught in my first lesson of Access. I have added some additional records to the database we created in Lesson 1. You can get a copy of this file by going to the Practice Lesson Files folder on this Video Professor CD. Click the Start button and open My Computer. Although everyone's computer will look a little different, look for your CD drive. It will have a Video Professor icon. Right-click the icon and select Open. Double-click the Practice Lesson Files folder. And double-click the Access 2003 folder. Click and drag the Rewind Videos and DVDs file to your desktop. This makes a copy of the file on your computer. If Windows asks to replace the existing file from Lesson 1, go ahead and replace it. Now everyone should have a new file on the desktop. Just double-click the icon on your desktop to launch Access and open the file. When you open the file, you may see a Microsoft message about opening the file. Just click Yes to continue. A second warning window will then appear. Click Open. If these messages appear when opening a database file later in the lesson, simply click Yes and Open to continue. Let's start our lesson today by setting up the customer table. We need to create a table where Eddie's employees can quickly identify a customer and see the customer's rental history. This time, we're going to build our table by using the table wizard. It offers us some useful shortcuts. If the tables option is not already selected, click the tables button in the database window and select new. Click the table wizard, which is the third option. Click OK. On the left side of the Table Wizard dialog box, there's a list of sample tables we can use as a starting point for building a new table. We can also choose from a list of business and personal tables. The business list is the default. The sample fields to make our own custom tables are displayed in the middle window. Click the radio button labeled Personal so we can see what the list has to offer. The personal sample tables include addresses, guests, recipes, plants, and other personal inventory items. For Eddie, let's go back to the business tables list. Click the business radio button. The mailing list sample table is the default business selection. It also happens to contain most of the fields we need, so we'll use it. Our next step is to select the fields we want to include in our customer table. Scroll down and select Home Phone from the list. 
We'll use the digits in our customer's home phone number as their Rewind Video's membership ID number. Click the single arrow button to the right to move that field to the fields in my new table box. We want to rename this field, so click the Rename Field button. In the box, type Customer ID without a space between the R and I. Click OK. The next field we want in our customer table is last name. Scroll back up the field list until you see it and double click. Double clicking is a faster way to add fields than highlighting them and using the arrow buttons. Next is the first name field. Go ahead and add that one to the field list for the new table. Use the same procedure to add the address, city, and state fields. Two fields down from the state field is the postal code field. Add that one to our list as well. Click the Rename Field button and type the word zip code. Capitalize both words, but don't leave a space between the words. Click OK. Those fields will do for now, so click Next to move on. The wizard wants to know what to call our table. We're going to keep the naming convention we started in the first lesson by using the TBL prefix. In capital letters, type TBL, a hyphen, and then the word customers with a capital C. Don't leave any spaces. We're going to set our own primary key, so click the No Radio button. Click Next or press the Enter key. Remember from our first lesson that a primary key field must hold unique data for every record. The customer ID qualifies, so leave that field selected. This will be a text field, so leave the Numbers and Letters option selected as well. Click Next. We use this box to define relationships between the customer table and other tables in the database. The wizard did not detect any common fields between the new table and the existing inventory table, so it set a default of no relationship. The customer table will not be directly related to the inventory table, so this is correct. Click Next. We need to change some of the field properties before we are ready to enter data into this table. Click the Modify Table Design Radio button. Click Finish. We are back at the Table Design view. The cursor is on the line for the Customer ID field. Notice the key symbol identifying this field as the primary key. Look at the field properties. See the section called Input Mask? It's the third one from the top. Click in the Entry field. An input mask contains character codes telling Access exactly how to format data entered in this field. It also controls the kinds of values entered in the field. Notice the ellipse to the right of the field. Click it to open the dialog box. If you do not have this feature installed, you will get a dialog box asking to install it. If this is the case, go ahead and install it now. The first choice is phone number format, which is exactly what we want. The input mask tells Access to automatically fill in the parentheses for the area code and the hyphen in the phone number. It also means that only digits can be entered in the field, no letters or special characters. Click Next. The contents in the input mask field should be highlighted. We want to have Access automatically fill in the area code. Replace the contents in the field by typing the information exactly as you see on screen, including the exclamation mark and parentheses. Be sure to put a space between the second parenthesis and the zero. When defining the input mask, Access has difficulty distinguishing between a zero and a placeholder character, so it is necessary to put quotation marks on either side of the zero in the area code to clarify that. We now need to designate our placeholder characters. Placeholder characters show the exact number of characters needed to complete the field. As we enter information into that field, our characters type over the placeholders. 
Click the drop down arrow next to the character box to see our choices. Since we're using phone numbers, select the number symbol, the second one down. Click in the Try It box to see what the format will look like in our table. That looks right, so click Next. We have the choice of using the symbols in our input mask. We definitely want to see the symbols, so click the radio button next to With the Symbols in the Mask. Press Next. Press Finish. Click in the Caption field. Take a look at the characters in the Input Mask field. They may look rather complicated, but they are correct. Viewers, the Auto Correct button appears. Click it. We have the option to either update automatically all Input Mask properties or to get help from the web. Right now, there's nothing to update. Click the button to close the menu. Auto Correct can be a time saving feature available throughout the Access program. We could turn off this feature by opening the Tools menu and going to Auto Correct Options. However, we might find them useful as we proceed through the lesson, so we will leave the default on. Remember, the clerks in Eddie's store will be using this database. They may not know or care that we're using this field as the customer ID, but they need to know what goes in it. In the space for the caption, type Home Phone. We also want to make this a required field. Click in the box for Required. Click the down arrow and select Yes. This property setting instructs Access not to save the record if no value has been entered in the Customer ID field. To make the field's purpose completely clear, let's put in a description as well. Click in the Description column above and type Use customer's home phone number as the customer ID. Click the last name line to see its properties. Below, the table wizard has already filled in a caption of last name for us. Look at the field entitled Indexed in the property list. This tells us this field is indexed and that duplicates are OK. Access automatically creates an index for each table based on the primary key field or fields. Access uses indexes to find and sort fields faster, much like the way we would use the index in a cookbook. For instance, let's say we want to find a recipe for chocolate chip cookies. We could page through the cookbook and look at every recipe in it, but that would take a great deal of time. Instead, we flip to the index and find the entry for chocolate chip cookies, which tells us what page the recipe is on. In the same way, an access index contains only the values for a particular field or fields, such as all the last names from the customer table. Each of these fields points to the corresponding record in the table. Instead of searching through the whole table to find a particular record, access locates the right value in the index and goes straight to the record. Additionally, if we didn't allow duplicates in this field, we would not be able to have any customers with the same last name. That would severely limit the number of people Eddie could have as customers. We have one more adjustment to make to the last name field. This field should also be required, so click in the Required box. Click the down arrow and select Yes. That does it for this one. Click the line for the first name field above. Once again, the wizard has already entered the caption for us. We also want the first name required, so click that property box, open the drop down list, and click the Yes command. Click in the address line to select it. And then click in the required field again. Open the drop down menu and click Yes. Continue to the city field and repeat these steps.
click the State field. Since all of our customers live in the state of Colorado, let's enter a default value to speed up data entry. Click the default value space. Type the two-letter abbreviation for Colorado, CO. Another ellipsis appears at the end of this field. Click it. This opens the expression builder. An expression is a combination of mathematical or logical operators. These are constants or functions that can perform calculations, manipulate characters, or test data. The expression builder is a feature Microsoft has added to allow us to manipulate data in our fields. Notice quotation marks have been added to our entry. This addition tells Access that this is a default field. Click OK. Click the zip code field, and we'll use the input mask option again. Place your cursor on the input mask field, and click the ellipsis. We must save our table before applying the input mask, so click Yes. When the Input Mask Wizard dialog box appears, click the Zip Code option. At the bottom of the box is the Try It option. Click in the box. It shows how our zip code will appear. A space for five numbers, a dash, and a space for four more. Click Next. On this screen, we can modify the template input mask to suit our needs. We do not always know the longer zip code for our customers, so let's delete the last four digits and the hyphen. Click Try It again to see if it looks OK. Click Next. The wizard asks us to indicate how we would like the data stored. We aren't using any symbols, so click Finish to close the input mask wizard. Remember, we changed the field name for our zip code so Access didn't enter a caption for it. Click the caption space and type zip code. We are just about finished with the design of this table. It would be a good idea to add a field stating when this person first became a customer. Click in the first blank row. In the field's name box, type start date, no spaces, capital S and capital D. Press tab. Press the D key on the keyboard and Access automatically selects the date, time, data type. Press Tab. In the Property section, select the Format box. Click the down arrow and select the Short Date Format. In the Caption space, type Start Date as two words. Move to the Description column and type Date of First Rental. That does it. Close the table. And save our changes. We are back at the Database window. We now have two objects listed on the Tables tab. In the next section, we will create a form to go along with the new customer table and add some customer records. The Form Wizard does a lot of the tedious structural and formatting work for us. It allows us to select fields from the various objects within our database, and it automatically adds field boxes and titles representing those fields to the grid, and places them in a uniform manner. It also allows us to apply a formatting theme to the grid and the controls that appear on it. Suzanne, click the Forms tab and click the New button. We're going to use the Form Wizard to create the form. Click it. With the dialog box open, click the down arrow for the text box at the bottom of the dialog box. Each access form must be connected to one or more tables. 
For this form, we're going to use the customer table, so click that option. Click OK. The wizard wants to know what fields to include in this form. We want all of them, so click the double arrow button. The wizard moved everything to the selected fields box at once. Click Next. The form wizard gives us a variety of choices on how our form will look. I think the columnar format is best for our form. Click Next. We need to choose a background and style for our form. Again, the preview window on the left provides a glimpse of what each style looks like. Try the Expedition style. Click Next. The wizard asks what to call our form. We'll stick with our naming convention. Type capital FRM, a hyphen, and then the word customer with a capital C and the rest lowercase. As usual, don't leave any spaces. We have a couple of design changes to make, so click the Modify the Forms Design option. And click Finish. And here's the template for our new form. Click the Maximize icon to enlarge the window. Use the click and drag method we used in Lesson 1 to drag the right edge of the form so it lines up with the 7.5 inch horizontal ruler mark. Using your mouse, drag the top edge of the footer section bar down to the 1 inch vertical mark under the section bar and release your mouse. Notice that the detail area has expanded to just short of 4 inches in height. Each form section has its own ruler. For example, when the detail section is expanded, the ruler becomes larger. Likewise, if the area is reduced in size, the ruler becomes smaller. If necessary, use the scroll bars to get to the upper left-hand corner of our form. Access helps us differentiate between labels and field boxes. The field box is white, while the label text will vary in color depending on our color scheme. Access has set properties for both, but as usual, we can manipulate them to suit our needs. Let's format the field boxes so they display their information in a larger font size. This will make it easier for the data entry person. Hold down the Shift key and click in each of the field boxes. Click the drop down arrow for the font size box on the toolbar and select 10. That's better. Now move the controls to the middle of the form. Press your Control and A keys together to select all. Move the mouse until the black move hand is active. Drag the controls down and to the right and use the rulers to line up the controls upper left corner with the 1 inch horizontal mark and the 1 inch vertical mark. Watch the shaded areas to make sure the controls are in the correct position. Release the mouse button. Click outside the control to see where the table ended up. Let's add a title. Click the label tool, the one with the italicized A's. Move the pointer onto the form and line up the crosshair with the half inch vertical mark and the one inch horizontal mark. Click the mouse and type the words Rewinds Customer Information and press Enter. With the title object still selected, click the font type down arrow and type an A to select Arial. Click the font size drop down arrow and select 18. Finally, right-click the title to display the pop-up menu. Open the Size submenu and click to fit. Click the Save icon to save our changes. We're ready to enter some records. 
The View button is just to the left of the Save button. Click it now, and we'll go from the Form Design view to the Form view. That looks great. Now let's enter some records. The cursor is in the Home Phone field, ready to go. Type 555-1111. As you type, Access fills in the area code, the parentheses, space, and hyphen for you. That's the advantage of using the input mask. Press Tab to move to the last name field and type Langley. Move to the first name field and type Joe. In the address field, type 833 Peacock Lane. Notice Access made this a multi-line field. We can enter additional address information, such as a suite number or apartment number. If the address requires more than two lines, we just use the return key to enter the information and up and down arrows to view the additional information. Joe lives in an apartment, so let's put that part of his address on the second line. Type the number sign, 305B. In the city field, type Eagle Rock. We can skip the state field since the default is already entered for us. Press Tab twice to move to the zip code field. Type 80222. Move to the start date field and type 8 forward slash 22 forward slash 03. Press Enter to complete this record. The navigation area tells us we are about to enter the second record in the active database table. The information for the records that you are to enter is displayed on the tabs that you see before you. Copy the information in the sequence that you see here. Click the tabs or click the yellow notes to bring each sheet of information into view. That gives us enough to work with, so close the form. Make sure you click the small X to close the form box and not the X to close Access. Access saves all records automatically as they are entered in a table or form. Unless you've made some changes to the form design, you will not see a save box appear after you close the form. The only time we need to save is when we make changes to an object, such as a table or form. It's time to transact some business, Suzanne, so let's go on to create the transaction table. We still need to create one more table. This one will be used to store the records of tape rental transactions. Click the Tables tab in the database window and select New. In the New Table dialog box, be sure the Data Sheet view is highlighted and click OK. We'll start by naming our fields. Suzanne, double click the Field 1 heading in the first column to highlight it. Type Rental Date. Remember to capitalize both words and type them without a space in between. Double-click the Field 2 heading and type Customer ID. Press Enter. We're going to link the data in the Rental table with the data in the Customer table. In order to do that, both tables must have a common field. In this case, each record in the Rental table relates to a specific record in the Customer table which is identified by the customer ID. In order to set up a relationship between tables, the common field must have the exact same name in both tables and must be the primary key for one of the tables. The same field in the second table is referred to as a foreign key. A foreign key is simply a field used to relate one table to another. A table can relate to more than one other table, so it can have multiple foreign keys. In this case, we also want to relate the rental table to the inventory table, so those two tables must have a common field as well, in this case, the tape ID. 
Each rental record relates to a specific record in the tape inventory table, which is identified by the tape ID. Double click the field 3 heading and type that now. We have two more fields to add to this table. Double click the field 4 heading and type date due. And double click field 5 and type date returned. Press your enter key. We need to make some adjustments to this table, so click the view icon to change to the design view. In the Save As box, type capital TBL, a hyphen, and then the word Rental with a capital R and the rest lowercase. Click OK. Access reminds us we do not yet have a primary key. We want Access to create the primary key for us this time, so click Yes. Access created a primary key field for us and called it ID. Let's make that more specific. Click in the front of the I and type Rental to make the field name Rental ID. We now need to set the properties for the Rental Date field. Pull down the Data Type menu and select the Date Time option. In the Field Properties section of the window, click in the Format box and then the down arrow. We'll stick with the short date format, so click that option. Click in the caption field and type rental date as two words. Click the database window icon. It's on the right side of the standard toolbar and has an image of overlapping documents on it. The database window has been behind this one all along. Clicking that button simply moved it to the front. Click the customer table and click the design button. The window opens with the cursor on the customer ID field line. In the properties section of the window, highlight the input mask and right click to open the shortcut menu. Click the Copy command. We're done with this table, so click its close icon. Click the Rental table to make it active and make sure you are in the design view. Once that window is on top, select the Customer ID field to make it active. Right click the mouse inside the Input Mask box and click the paste command. Let's add a caption for this field to tell what to enter. In this caption space, type home phone. To be consistent, type customer's phone number is the customer ID in the description column of the customer ID row. Next is the Tape ID field. Click in its Data Type column. The Tape ID is a number, so click the down arrow and select the Number Data Type. Remember, the Tape ID was an Auto Number field in the Tape Inventory table, but once the Auto Number is assigned, it becomes just a regular number as far as any other object in the database is concerned. Let's add a caption for this field. In the caption space, type Tape ID. Click in the Required box and select Yes from the drop down list. Let's add a description so anyone entering rental records knows where to find the Tape ID. Click in the Description column and type Get ID Number from the spine of the videotape case. Moving on to the Date Due field, click the Data Type down arrow and select Date Time. 
In the caption box, type date due as two words. We may want to sort or search on this date field, so let's create an index for it. Click in the index box and open the drop down list. Click Yes, Duplicates OK. Click in the description column and type Next Day for New Releases, Two Days for All Others. We're almost done with the field definitions. Click in the Data Type column for the Date Return field and select Date Time. Select Short Date for the format. Type Date Returned as two words in the caption space. We want to create an index for this field as well, so click in that space. Click the down arrow and select Yes, Duplicates OK. That completes this table, so click Close and choose Yes to save our changes. Now that we have all of our tables, our next task is to define the relationships between them. Remember that to connect the data in two access tables, the tables must have a common field. We'll use the Tape ID field to link the Rental table and the Inventory table, and we'll use the Customer ID field to link the Rental and Customer tables. Suzanne, pull down the Tools menu and select the Relationships option. The Show Table dialog box allows us to add objects to the Relationships window. We want to create a relationship between our three tables. With the Customer table highlighted, hold down the Shift key and click the remaining two tables. Click the Add button. Click Close. Three boxes appear containing a list of the fields in those tables. We're going to connect the common fields in these tables. Click the Tape ID field in the Rental table and hold the mouse button down. Drag the pointer until it is over the Tape ID field that appears within the Inventory table. Release the mouse button. We'll use the resulting dialog box to finish defining the relationship. The field names are filled in for us, and this relationship is already defined as being one-to-many. A one-to-many relationship is the most common. A record in Table A can have many matching records in Table B, but those records in Table B have only one matching record in Table A. We want to enforce referential integrity, so toggle that checkbox, Suzanne. Referential integrity refers to the system of rules Access uses to ensure that the relationship between a pair of tables is sound. The Cascade Update option instructs Access to update all records in the Many table that are related to a changed record within the One table. For example, if we were to change the ID number of one of the tapes in our inventory, all the records within the Rental table linked to that tape ID would be updated to reflect that change. We want to ensure any changes to the tape information in the inventory table is reflected in the rental table, so make sure the Cascade Update option is selected. The Cascade Delete option can save a lot of time, but can cause a lot of problems too. It instructs Access to delete all the records in the Many table that are related to the record we delete in the One table. We don't want deleting a tape number in the inventory field to affect any of our rental records, so we'll leave the Cascade Delete option off for now. That's all we need to do here, so click Create. The line shows the relationship between the two tables.
The symbols indicate that one record in the inventory table can theoretically relate to an infinite number of records in the rental table. Let's also create a relationship between the rental and customer tables. Click the Customer ID field in the rental table and drag the pointer over the same field in the customer table and release the mouse button. Again, we want to enforce referential integrity. This will eliminate any rental records for customers that don't have records in the database. Click that box to check it and select Create. A line appears marking a relationship link between tables. We're done here, so go ahead and click the icon to close this window. We want to save the relationship layout, so click Yes. Before we build a form and start entering rental records, we're going to create a couple of simple queries that will make the form easier to use. Let's briefly go over what queries are and how they benefit us. The process of pulling information out of a database is called a query, and it is, quite literally, asking questions in the language of the database structure. Our first query is a very simple question. What tapes are in the Rewind Videos inventory and which numbers are assigned to them? In the Database window, click the Queries tab and double-click Create Query in Design View, which is already highlighted. Access wants to know which table or tables to use in the query. For this one, we only need the inventory table, so click that object to select it. Click Add to add it to the query. Click Close. This is the Query Design window. It may look complicated, but it's actually very simple to use. First, we need to tell Access which fields to use in the query. Click the Tape ID field in the Inventory Table object and drag it to the field box in the first column of the query table. When the mouse is released, Access automatically fills in the field and table names. Click the Title field in the Table object and drag it to the second column on the same line. Believe it or not, the query is done. That's all there is to it. Click the View button to see the results. Access displays the results as a table showing each tape title and its corresponding ID number. We know our query works the way we want it to, so click the Close icon. We want to save the query, so click Yes. For query names, we'll use the prefix QRY. So for this name, type capital QRY, a hyphen, and the words tape titles. Use initial caps on both words, but don't leave any spaces. Click OK. For our second query, we're going to get a little fancier. We're going to create a query that includes a simple calculated field. Calculated fields are used for a wide variety of purposes, including combining the contents of two fields. On the Queries tab, double-click Create Query in Design View. In the Show Table dialog box, double-click the Customer Table object to select it and close it. There's another way to fill in field names for the query. Click the down arrow attached to the field box in the first column for the fields in the customer table. Click Customer ID. For the next column, we're going to enter an expression. An expression can be an instruction telling Access what to put in the calculated field. In this case, it is the combination of first and last names for our customer table. Later, we'll use another type of expression to define criteria for selecting records. To enter the expression, 
click in the second column. Hold down your shift key and press F2. Type the field name, first name with no spaces. An ampersand. Quotation marks. A space. And another quotation mark. Type another ampersand. And type in the other field, last name, again with no spaces. The term for combining fields like this is concatenation. Click OK. And press Enter. Widen the column to see all the text. EXPR1, an abbreviation for expression number 1, is not a very descriptive name. Highlight that and type full name. Again, use initial caps and don't leave a space. Be careful not to delete the colon. Press Enter. Save the query by clicking the Save icon and naming it QRY hyphen, customer name, initial caps. Click OK. Click the View icon to see the results. Access combines the contents of the two name fields and displays them as a single field. With our queries done, we're ready to create a form that allows the clerks at Rewind Videos to enter rental records using the rental table and the two queries we just created. Before we can create the new form, we must close the query window. Click Close. Click Forms. And double click Create Form using Wizard. Open the Tables Queries list. The pull down menu lists all the tables and queries in our database. We can use fields from any or all of these objects in any combination we want. Select the rental table. Move the rental date and customer ID fields to the selected fields box. We'll come back to this table for some more items, but we want the customer name to appear next on our list. This saves us the step of having to rearrange the fields later on the form. Select the customer name query from the table's queries box. We already have the customer ID field, so move the full name field to the selected fields box. Open the tables queries list again and reselect the rental table. Add the tape ID field. Select the tape title query from the tables queries list. And add the title field. Return to the rental table and add the date due and date returned fields. That does it for the field selection, so click Next. The wizard wants to know how to view our data. Although we used fields from the two queries, the primary source of data is the rental table, so the default choice is correct. Click Next. We want to use the column layout, which is the default. Click Next. And we'll keep the expedition style. Click Next. Name this form FRM, a hyphen, and rental. We want to make some changes to this form, so click Modify the form's design and click Finish. Click the Maximize icon to fully view the window. Drag the right edge to the 6-inch horizontal ruler mark. And drag the bottom edge of the detail section down to the 1-inch vertical mark.
Use your scroll bars if needed to get to the upper left-hand corner of the form. Let's change the font size to make the field contents easier to read. Hold down the Shift key and click each field, just the fields, not the labels. Click the down arrow for the font size box and select 12. Let's move some fields around to make this form more attractive. First, let's get rid of a couple of unnecessary labels. Click the Label Control for the Full Name field. Make sure the label is selected, not the field itself. Press Delete. Do the same thing for the Title field. Let's move the controls. Press the Control and A keys together. Move the pointer until the hand appears and drag the compound control down and to the right. Use the shaded portions of the rulers to align the top left corner of the control with a 1 inch horizontal mark and the 3 fourths inch vertical mark. To add a title, click the Label tool. Place the crosshair pointer so it intersects at the 1 half inch horizontal mark and the quarter inch vertical mark. Click the mouse button to set it. Type Rewind Tape Rentals and press Enter. Leaving the label selected, change the font type to Arial and the font size to 16. Right click the mouse on the title to display the shortcut menu. Open the size submenu and select to fit. We have one more thing to do with this form. We need to lock our two query fields, full name and title, so that they can't be edited. Right click the full name field to display the pop up menu. Select properties. In the Properties dialog box, click the Data tab. Click the Locked Option box. Click the down arrow that appears and select Yes. We've got more to do, so don't close the Properties box yet. Click the Title field to select it. We may need to move the Properties box out of the way to get to the Title field. Click in the Locked Property box again, click the down arrow, and select Yes. Close the Properties box. Click the Save icon to save our changes. Click the View icon to see the results. And there's our form, with the cursor in the Rental Date field ready to go. Now let's enter some records. For the rental date, type 10503. Separate the numbers with either a hyphen or a forward slash. Tab to the Customer ID field, the one labeled Home Phone, and enter 555-1111. Press Enter. And there's the customer name, Joe Langley. Tab to the Tape ID Number field and enter a 3. Hit Enter or Tab, and again, we see our queries at work. Access automatically displays the movie title, Ocean's Eleven. Move to the Date Due field and enter 10703, just as we did with the rental date. Finally, move to the Date Returned field and type 10603. Press Enter to move to the next blank record. Enter the information for the records displayed on these tabs. Click the tabs or click the yellow notes to bring each sheet of information into view. Suzanne, click the Find icon on the toolbar. It's the one with a picture of binoculars.
This is the Find dialog box. In the Find What box, type About. Pull down the Look In box and choose the rental form. Click the down arrow for the match box and select the option for any part of field. That way we don't have to specify the whole title. We can search up, down, or in all of the database. We can also instruct the query to match the case by a click in the checkbox. Click Find Next. Move aside the Find and Replace box. And there's our rental record for About Schmidt. We also could do a search by part of a customer's name, the customer ID or the tape ID. Or we could tell Access to only look in a specific field, such as the rental date. Click the Cancel button for the Find dialog box and close the form. We're back at the familiar database window. We now have the basics of tables and forms, so let's look at another kind of access object, reports. A report is another type of database object that displays database information according to specific guidelines. Depending on the information in the database, we can create all kinds of reports, from sales summaries to phone lists and mailing labels. When creating a report, we tell Access the criteria for including records and how the information should be organized and formatted. Suzanne, click the Reports tab and double-click the Wizard option. Like forms, reports can be based on one or more tables and queries. For this report, let's print out a list of the tapes in our inventory. Open the Table Queries field and select the Inventory table. The wizard asks us what fields to include in the report. We don't need the tape number, but we need the title. Click Title and click the arrow to move it. We'll limit the report to just two more items, the year released and the genre. Select those fields and click the right arrow to move them. Click Next. The wizard wants to know if we want to group the records by any of the fields. Let's group them by genre, then by year. Click Genre and the right arrow. With Year Released selected, click the right arrow again. The wizard shows us the report will group the tapes first by genre, then by year released. If we wanted to change a grouping option, use the left arrow to undo it. We'll keep what we have, so click Next. The wizard wants to know how to sort the report information. The wizard lets us sort up to four fields. We don't have many fields to work with here, so we'll just have our records print in alphabetical order by title. Click the down arrow for the first sort field and select Title. Make sure the Sort button is set to Ascending and click Next. Remember the way information is grouped or presented in a report has no effect on the data in the table or any other object used to create the form. The next window allows us to tell the wizard how to format our report. The window on the left shows a preview of how the report will look. The stepped option will work best for this report, so leave it selected. We'll leave the orientation at Portrait. And we do want all of the fields to fit on one page. Click Next. We can select a style for the report. Clicking each option displays a preview in the window. Click Compact and click Next. The wizard wants to know a title for this report. Type in Tape Inventory by Category. 
Finally, the wizard gives us a chance to preview the report before printing it. Click Finish to preview the report. Suzanne, click the down arrow for the zoom factor box. Click 75%. Use the scroll bars to center the image on screen. If it is not already, maximize the screen. This preview shows us what our report would look like printed on an 8.5 by 11 inch sheet of paper. We can see how Access has arranged our video titles. The genres appear in large type on the left. Within each genre, the titles are grouped by year. For each year, the titles are listed in ascending alphabetical order. The report looks pretty good, but it could be improved. The year fields for each record do not line up under the year column heading. Let's fix that, Suzanne. Click the Close button on the toolbar. This is the Report Design View window. As you can see, it looks a lot like the Form Design View, and it's similar in the way it works. Click the Year Released field Control Object. It appears in the Year Released header section. Move the pointer over the middle handle on the right side of the field to see the double arrow. Click and drag the handle to the left until the right side of the field lines up with the three and a half inch mark on the top ruler. Release the mouse. OK. Let's see how that worked. Click the View button again. That looks much better. Notice in this view, the icon has changed to the shape of a magnifying glass. By clicking the report, Access automatically changes the view so we can see the entire first page. Clicking the report again returns us to the previous view. We don't need to print this particular report, so click the X in the upper right corner to close this report. Click Yes to save our definition and the report is saved as another object in our database. In the next section, let's expand our skills with queries. We feel pretty comfortable with Access by now, so we're going to move on to something a little more sophisticated. We'll start by opening a new query. Click the Queries tab, and double-click Create Query in Design View to select that option. In the Show Table dialog box, double-click each of the three tables to add them to the query, and click Close. Access displays both the tables and the relationships between them in the top half of the design window. The query needs to contain everything we want to include in the report. We'll start by including the customer name and the address information from the customer table. Double-click the Customer ID field. Double-clicking on a field is yet another way to add it to the query table. We could also type the field name in the first line of the column. Click in the field name box in the second column. We're going to concatenate, which means to join or to link together, the first and last name fields. That way, when we print the report, we won't end up with big spaces between the first and last names. Double-click the first name field in the customer table, and press Shift F2 to open the expression Zoom box. Access has already put in the first name portion of the expression for us. Click to the right of it. Type an ampersand, a quotation mark, a space, another quotation, an ampersand, and then last name with no spaces. Notice this is a duplicate of the expression we created in the full name query earlier in the lesson. Click OK to accept the expression, and press Enter again.
Replace the generic expression expr1 by typing name. Be careful not to delete the colon by mistake. We also want a field with only the first name to use in the salutation of our letter. Drag that field from the customer table to the top of the next column in the query table. Press Shift F2 to bring up the Zoom box. To the right of the first name entry, type an ampersand, a quotation mark, a comma, and another quotation mark. That way, when the name prints on the report, a comma will automatically follow it. Press your Enter key twice. Again, we need a name for the expression. Highlight EXPR1 and type SAL for salutation. Don't delete the colon. Press Enter when you finish. This moves the insertion point into the next column. Drag the address field from the customer table to the fourth column of the query. For the next column, we're going to concatenate three fields, the city, state, and zip. As before, this will prevent unwanted spaces in the report. Scroll through the customer table field list to the city field. Double click it and press Shift F2 to bring up the zoom box. Place the cursor after the Y and type an ampersand, quotation mark, comma, space, quote, ampersand, and the word state. Follow that with an ampersand, quote, space, quote, ampersand, and finally the field name zip code with no spaces. Pressure Enter key once to return to the query and once more to edit the label. Now highlight the characters EXPR1 at the beginning of the expression and type city state zip with initial caps and no spaces. Press Enter. That's all we need from the customer table, so let's move on to the inventory table. Double click the tape ID field to put it in the next column or drag it there. Use the scroll bar to view the next available columns if necessary. Next to the tape ID, we'll put the title field from the inventory table. Press Tab and double click the title field. In order to generate our form letters, we need access to identify all of the rental records where a tape has been due for a week or more, and the tape has not been returned. For the purposes of this query, let's assume today's date is October 20th, 2003. We'll start by putting the date due field from the rental table in the next column of our query. Use the scroll bar along the side of the rental table to locate and move it. Press Enter. Next, we specify the selection criteria for the date. To do that, we're going to enter another type of expression. Click the first criteria line for the date due column and type a less than sign, an equal sign, and a pound sign, followed by the selection date 10 slash 20 slash 03 and a final pound sign. Press Enter. This tells Access to include all records where the date due is on or before October 20th. In the future, to reuse this query, all we have to do is change this date. Once Access has identified the records where the date due has passed, we want it to identify those records where no date has been entered in the Date Returned field. When an access field is blank, we say that its value is null. So we want access to include just those records where the value of the date return field is null. Put the date return field from the rental table in the next query column. Click the first criteria line for that column. 
Type the words is null and press enter. That completes the query. Click the view button to see the results. Here are the two customers with overdue tapes. Click the close icon, Suzanne, and click yes to save the query. Let's call it QRY overdue. Remember to include a hyphen. Click OK or press Enter. You may have noticed that the title Jerry Maguire is misspelled. Let's spell check the full inventory for misspellings. Click the Tables button in the database window and open TBL Inventory. Look for an icon with the letters A, B, C and a check mark on it. This opens the Spell Check program. Click it. The Axis Spell Checker is just like spell checking in other Microsoft Office products. The Spell Checker went right to McGuire. It didn't find the correct spelling, but we can type it in manually. Type M A G U I R E with a capital M and a capital G. Click Change. And there's another misspelled title. This time it lists the correct spelling for Titanic. Click Change again. The spell check is complete. Click OK. And close the table. With our new overdue query, we can get the information we need to generate our form letters. Now let's design the letter. We do that by creating a custom report. We're going to create a report in the form of a letter and have Access use this information from our overdue query to tailor each letter to a specific customer. From the database window, click the Reports tab, click New. We can't use the Report Wizard this time because we want something different from a standard report. We'll create our report in Design View. Leave that selected and click the down arrow for the Choose Table or Query text box. Click the Overdue Query and click OK. Let's adjust the report so it will fit in an 8.5 by 11 inch page. Move the mouse pointer over to the right edge until the double arrow appears. Drag the edge till it lines up with the 6.5 inch mark on the top ruler. And release the mouse button. The report design assumes a 1 inch margin on each side. Move the pointer over the top part of the footer section bar until you see the vertical double arrow. Click and drag the bottom edge of the detail section to the 3 inch mark on the footer ruler and release the mouse. Press page up to scroll back to the top of the page. Viewers, if the Fields List box is not already on your screen, click the button just left of the Toolbox icon. This list shows the fields we created in our query. We'll start with the Name field. Click and drag it to anywhere onto the Report Grid. We'll line it up in just a moment. We don't want any field labels in our letter, so click the Name Label Control. Make sure the selected control is the label and not the field itself. Press your delete key. Drag the field control to the upper left corner of the detail section. Align the top edge with a quarter inch vertical mark and the side on the far left edge. Do the same with the address field. Drag it out of the field list onto the grid and delete the label. Select the field control and drag it so one dotted line shows between the fields and it's lined up on the left side.
Do the same thing for the city state zip field. Drag it out, delete the label, and put the field box below with one dotted line showing beneath the address field. Click the label button on the toolbar. Remember, it's the one with the italicized A's on it. Move the pointer so the crosshair is even with the left edge and aligned with a 1 inch vertical mark. Click the mouse button to anchor the label. Type the word deer and press enter. Next, the salutation field. Drag it out onto the grid and delete the label. Drag it so the top edge is on the same line as deer and the left edge is aligned with a 3 8 inch horizontal mark. Click the label tool again. Line the crosshair up so it is even with the left edge and aligned with a 1 3 8 inch vertical mark. Type, our staff is debating the best method for getting you to return the following tape to our store, followed by a colon. Drag the title field out of the field list onto the grid and delete the label. Drag the field so its left edge is lined up with a 1 inch horizontal grid line and the bottom edge is even with a 1 5 8 inch vertical mark. Click the label tool and line the crosshair up so it is even with the left edge and the 2 inch vertical mark. Type the choices are followed by a colon. If necessary, use the scroll bars to bring more of the bottom of the grid into view. Click the checkbox tool on the toolbox. Move the pointer so the crosshair has four dotted grid lines in from the left edge and aligned with the 2 and 3 8 inch vertical mark. Click the mouse to anchor the checkbox. Delete the generic text appearing in the label box attached to the checkbox. Be careful not to delete the box itself. If you do, use the undo button to bring it back on screen. Type the sentence, hold a monster truck rally in your front yard. Click the checkbox tool again and move the pointer until the crosshair has four grid lines from the left edge and four grid lines down from the first box. Click the mouse to anchor the box. Delete the generic text. And type the sentence, report you to the IVRP, International Video Rental Police. Click the checkbox tool one more time. Use the grid to locate this checkbox four dotted lines down and even with the second checkbox. Delete the generic text attached to the checkbox and type this sentence. Confiscate your remote controls. Click the label tool one more time. This time, line the crosshair up with the left edge and the 3 and 1 fourth inch vertical mark. Type, if the tape is returned before we decide on a course of action, we'll have to find something else to do. Hold down the shift key and press enter twice to insert a blank line inside the label box. Type the word sincerely and follow it with a comma. Once again, hold down the shift key and press enter twice. Type the staff at Rewind Videos and press enter. That completes the detail section of our letter. Press the page up key to scroll back to the top of the page. Let's add a heading so the recipients will know where the letter came from. We'll put it in the header section. We need a little more room, 
So move the pointer over the top of the detail section bar until the vertical double arrow appears. Drag the bar down until it lines up with the quarter inch mark on the vertical left ruler for the detail section. And release the mouse button. Notice Access adjusts the detail section of the report to maintain the spacing of the fields and label boxes. Click the Label tool. This time, move the crosshair into the page header section. Line it up with the two and quarter inch horizontal grid mark on the top edge of the screen. Click the mouse to anchor the label box. Type Rewind Videos and DVDs. And press Enter. With the box still selected, click the font size down arrow and select 20. Click the bold button. It's the one with a large B on it. Let's add a special effect too. Right click the title and click the arrow next to the special effect option. Click the shadowed effect. It's in the middle of the second row. Let's change the color as well. Click the arrow for the fill back color option to view the color palette. Click the light gray color. It's the second one from the bottom on the far right side of the palette. Right click the label box to open the shortcut menu again. Open the size submenu and select the to fit option. Click the label tool once more. And line the crosshair up with the 2 inch horizontal mark and the half inch vertical mark. Type the slogan Your Friendly Neighborhood Video and DVD Store. And press Enter. With the label box still selected, pull down the font size list and select 11. Click the bold button and click the italics button. Open the shortcut menu and roll the mouse over special effect. Select the shadowed option. Right click again and select the to fit option from the size submenu. Click the preview icon. If your zoom field is set to fit, click in the zoom field and select 100% for a better view. The letter's overall appearance is fine, but the customer's name in the salutation is a little off. We need to move it closer to the word dear. Click the design view icon. Click and drag the salutation field box control over to the left until its outline butts up next to the label box for the word dear. Click preview again to see if the change worked. That looks much better. Close this object's window. Click yes to save this report. And when the Save As box appears, type in capital RPT, a hyphen, and the word Overdue Letter with no spaces. Click OK. All that's left is to print our letters. Highlight Overdue Letter. Pull down the File menu and select Print to open the Print dialog box. Like the other Microsoft Office applications, Access uses the default Windows printer unless we change that option. This dialog box also contains a Setup button. Click it. This box allows us to change the margins and if our reports had columns, we could adjust the column layout here.
You can also access this box from the Page Setup option on the File menu. We'll leave this page set up as it is, so click Cancel to close this box. We can also choose to print multiple copies or print only selected pages. We want to print the whole report and we only need one copy, so let's go ahead with these settings. Click OK. And in a few seconds, we should have your letters ready to send. In this video professor lesson, we learn new methods for creating tables and how to create relationships between tables. We learned how to do single and multiple table queries with calculated fields, how to customize forms and locate records, and how to create a custom report using a query. Thank you for being such good students. And remember, there is always more you can learn from me, the Video Professor.